Hey guys, Captain Matt. Welcome to the cleaning station. On today's episode, we got a fun one. I've got Captain Dan with the Florida Fishing Couple and Heiko, the South Florida Fishing Channel, coming back down. We are trying to break the swordfish curse. So we're gonna do a little sword fishing today, guys, and we're gonna do some deep drop in for some black belly rose fish. Okay, guys, so at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you two things. One, how I find the rose fish and to my rig and go over what to do when you're fishing for them. Had an epic day today. Got a little unusual equipment laying around. Look at that sexy cam. And we have the big Dodge Ram in the driveway. Captain Dan. Oh man, what a great day today. As always, listen, I haven't had a bad day when I go out with this guy. If you go out with this guy, you will catch fish. We're gonna put his, uh, his his marathon fishing charter sitting right there. You will catch fish. I'm just gonna take, but, but, but if I'm going out with him, I'm not gonna let you bump me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Dan has priority one on the Falcon. <laughs> I got a new ice guy. He's pretty yeah, nice. <laughs> She's fixed and ready to go for it. Heiko the Ice Man. <laughs> Heiko told us he used to sell ice machines, yeah. and I'm thinking due to the fact we can't get the swordfish all the way to the boat, he might need to go back to that. <laughs> no. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting closer, though. We're getting closer. <laughs> yeah. If everyone does not hit the subscribe button, I might have to start selling ice machines. Yep, again. there we go. If you don't hit the subscribe button, if you don't hit my subscribe yeah. button, I'm gonna have to help him sell ice machines. So, if you guys haven't already, please smash the subscribe button. It's gonna be a thruple then, because if be you don't thruple. subscribe to us, I'm gonna be selling yeah. ice machines. We need some out. subscriptions going on here. Let's go. But thanks for tuning in today. We're just on our way out to the sword grounds. Going by this ship, very bizarre looking ship here. So I got three fresh bait options. All right, we're gonna look at the bait options. Okay. No mind. All right, this, so we're looking at swordfish bait options. Here this we go. is the exact bait Nicole caught the one on. That's it. Wait, what? And that's the one we should use. We can use that one. He's frozen yet. Otherwise, I've got. Oh, is this a mahi belly or? A... Yeah, so one's a mahi and one's a um, bonita strip. Okay. But those are froze. These are fresh. So I got a barracuda Ooh. strip on, and I got a strip of, here's the queen snapper. Queen snapper? <laughs> queen fishing, snapper. with queen snapper. And each one of these is a barracuda strip, so I think we probably should use this on one. Right. And we so, should use which, which those color. Those look amazing. Which color would you like on those two? This one glows. I like the glowing one. Remember, you gotta kiss the one that, that, that uh, All right. That, you gotta that, give that one a kiss. All right. All right, there we go. See, mm. hold on, we gotta do that again, make sure I get I gotta footage. do it again? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Little tongue. Oh. <laughs> All right, kind of delicious. All right. Okay. <laughs> Reminds me of last night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Which rod? Which one do you want on the bottom rod? Which one on which one on the Ooh, bobber? I don't know. Let's see. Mm. All right, I would. This say, one looks uh, so good. It does look delicious. So. And it's barracuda. And it's barracuda. My and they not. throttle the shit out of barracuda. All right, yeah. then that's it. That's Probably the, the barracuda. That bottom one's rod got more flavor. Bottom, I think. and then uh, with the with the the queen snapper with the uh, float. Yep. On the float. That's actually a belly. It was so tough you can't stitch it. That's, that's pretty neat. Wow. All, All right. right. So this is bottom. We're going to lay them here. That's a glow in the dark. All right. I'm not sure. First we had the bird trying to grab our lure. Then we have, then we got a coffee episode here. Oh no. Is my, <laughs> is my coffee spilling again? <laughs> All right. Again. First thing, get the bait in the water. Just make sure she's swimming. It's not spinning, that's what you want. Yep, if it's spinning, good. it's spinning, you're not gonna win. Is that the weight clip right there? Probably. This one? I'm talking to Dan. Yeah, <laughs> I saw it come out and I was like, ah! Stop, brakes! All right, so the weight clip's over here, you so, have 100 feet, that's only 100 feet. Right? Yep, and there's 50 more, that way we know it's coming. All right, so, bait, 100 feet, So 200 pounds. I always let it go out tight, so this is tight on there, and then I pitch it out. You want to make sure you go underneath, and when you drop it, you, you gotta you gotta be ready. I caught a 450 pound blue marlin like this. Ready for 
Anything. Okay, Anything. I got you. All right. We caught a giant shark, probably a five, six hundred pounder. As it was going down. Before I got the weight on one day. And oh, as it was yeah. going on, down, I was on the tip rod. All of a sudden, it just stopped. If you don't have your thumb on there and this stops. We had a 450 pound blue marlin grabbed it as I was turning the corner on the tip rod. All of a sudden, that thing was jumping and greyhounding out next to the boat. And I got the weight on there. Oh, God. <laughs> it's flying up and down oh, in the air. Man. We caught the fish. So you're waiting now for this thing to hit the bottom and then you're gonna bounce it up. There's no, it's not, it won't even hit bottom. We're gonna get 1,500 feet and we're gonna clip the bobber on. How are you gonna know you're at 1,500 feet? There's a splice right in the middle of this, a 200 oh, okay. pound test. Okay. Splice is coming up. A lot of line going out. There is a lot of line. 1,500 feet. Hmm? Quarter mile. Yeah. You got a bobber with a quarter mile of line out. I got a big old fishing bobber here. Yeah. It's a little bigger than the red and white little lake bobbers. That's right. Yep, yeah, that thing is. And this is the extra line. It's a freebie. It's this is not fishing for crappie, fellas. <laughs> no. Similar but different. There's a buoy for you. That's the bobber. That's a big old bobber. 1,500 feet later, snap on bobber. It's coming. All right. And then we fish. So as we're getting close, you can see the wind on coming here on the reel. Yeah. So I'm oh, gonna add, there it is. right so there, Heiko. Heiko's gonna put that bobber right. on. So there's a loop there, so put it right on the main line with the loop outside of it. You, yep, you All got right. her? Nice. Okay, well, Heiko's got her. All right, away goes the bobber. Away goes the bobber. The float. All right, and you can bump the drag up just a little bit on that guy. Just so you got a little tension on it. Yep, okay. There we go. And this guy is going next. Okay, guys, we hit the bottom. I crank it up a little bit, and we get slammed. We're on right away. Now, here, here, Michael. Now the battle begins. All right, man. What do you need me to do? So that's drag right there. This is drag here. Oh, that's drag. Okay. This is speed. Dan's bringing the other rod in over there. Are right, you like a true professional? That's it. We got a, we got a well oil machine. All right, so next thing is to grab that guy, get that off of here. Okay. You're doing that with the gap? Is that how we do it? I actually, I'm going to... Oh, yeah. Lay that, put that on the other side. Damn, we're going to grab it. Weed removal 101. Oh. Almost got that. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for going oop. Yeah, I was like, oh! All right, brought the bobber in. Hey guys, getting the buoy rod in here. It's always kind of hairy carry when you hook one on the tip rod and the buoy rod's out. If you guys have not sword fished a lot, don't have at least 15 of them in the boat, I would not recommend starting with a buoy rod right out of the chute. It really complicates what's going on. Okay, so we hooked that first sword fish right away in the first drop. The guys had, you know, kind of limited time here. We did a couple more drops. And Dan had specific instructions to bring home some black belly rosefish. So on the way to the rosy grounds, we didn't hook another sword. We're doing a little ocean cleanup here. It's full of grease. Oh. Okay. Oh. That is grease. Here we go. All right. Swordfish weren't cooperating. Right, for the rosies. <laughs> Actually, we, it was nice. We did have one sword hooked up. For a little bit, we didn't have him hooked up. He actually had the bait and we didn't get the hooks in him or he didn't get the hooks in him, but he didn't fully cooperate. He was not cooperating. He did not. Yeah, they're just laying on the bottom and I'm just trying to spin us around where we're not dragging the line underneath. We're not dragging the line underneath the bottom of the boat, so to speak. Right now, our dinner plates are circling the squid. Okay, guys, we got cleaned off on the first drop. We had a 4.3 knot current so when I laid the rig down, it took me an extra minute or two to get the boat situated where I could manage the line. And at that time, they'd already cleaned the squid off the line. All right, yep. we should be right on the spot. Here's the tip. So we got anything going. I am prepared with the brain knife. Oh, is that some fishies? And we're loaded up here. That was good. Oh, okay. oh we got something on there. Yeah, there's something on there. 
Sure looks like it. Yep. That looks like a fish. Oh. Ah, I didn't even know fish on this time. Sean, we got dinner. You know why? It's because I baited the hooks, that's why. I'm sure that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Dan yeah. smell on it. They know Captain the deal. Dan actually licked the, the, the squid. There was no escaping Captain Dan. Alright? <laughs> None. None. Squid licking? We got it down. <laughs> <laughs> So the first, the first drop, guys, we're in like a four knot current. This is absolutely insane. I'm gunning the boat with both motors. Just to, we got the wind crossing us, so we got to kind of go backwards here. Heiko's, Heiko's talking about he was cooking. What were you cooking this morning at five o'clock? Amberjack. Amberjack, five a.m. For breakfast. I don't recommend it. <laughs> no, probably not breakfast. Food. Who eats Amberjack first thing in the morning? Who? I took the worms out Ooh, of it. That's oh. not even first thing. No, that's just leave them in. It doesn't matter. That's almost like <laughs> brass monkey time yeah, at 5 a.m. Worms, no worms. Uh, it's amberjack. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> I've been looking for color. You see that color now? Oh, there we go. There's one. Yeah? There's one. Oh, oh Rosie. 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 Hello, sweetheart. All right. We Hello. We had more than that on when we started. Hello, sweetheart. Welcome aboard. Dan's happy. There we go. Very nice to see you. Nice to meet your acquaintance. Yummy. Let's see the What time is it? It's uh, brain time. Yep. Brain time. You got a nice little feedies you got. Yeah. You get it by Miami, so that's an average size, I think, that they catch. Yeah. Yep. We've caught with you a much bigger one. Yeah. But. Listen, thanks for the first one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we got the skunk off the boat. They're eating it all right. We got a little. Yes. I see the tip was just shaking around there for a second. Yep. There's something on there. Oh yeah. 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 That looks good right there. Yeah. That looks good. Well, that's how the last one looked. And oh yeah, she's grunting now. Okay, we got a leader. Is that about 70, 80 feet a leader? There's definitely something. That, look at that rod tip. It's oh, yeah. Somebody's on there. Double over, baby. Here comes something. Rosie. Two of them. Two legs, Rosie. One of them's oh, fat. One of them's oh, there we fatty. go. Fatty. That's a beastie, Rosie. Yeah. Get up here, man. Watch weight. Watch weight. Don't lose that one. <laughs> I got the weight. <laughs> Don't lose that one. <laughs> wow! That's a nice one. Yeah, that's the one. That's boy. a good one. I think one. we lost one about 400 feet down yeah, the way it looks. Uh, that's a, that's a rosy there, boy. The little guy we could let go back down. Yeah, we should let the little one yeah, go back uh, down. Yeah, 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 Karma yeah. sacrifice. Okay, we can do that. Do yep. That. All right, you guys get that going. I'm going to kind of aim the boat the right direction there again. All right. All right, we're going to let you go. Look at that. Look how good we are. Freedom! All right, you know what the coolest part about these fish is? When you let them go, they don't have any bladders. They go straight down. You don't have to worry about that. Uh-oh. Well, they, there he, he, they just got, there he's gone. There he goes. As soon as they turn around, they, they yeah, got to right. figure out their orientation. There he goes, there he goes right yeah. down. Goodbye, Mr. Rosie. They are you, funny. Yeah. Wow. You, That's crazy that they can swim back down that deep. That your, was feet. Your fate. That is a huge knot. That, not that, that a, guy is yeah. not going back yeah, down. Not going back, sorry. Holy moly, sorry, he is dude. huge. He's so, camera worthy. Huge. Yeah, this is. That's a beautiful rose fish, there, dude. Oh, nice. Yep. Look at that. That, and, and he actually feels, I mean, he feels. Oh, yeah, that's a beefy fish. He is a nice looking fish. Yep, uh, that's what we're looking look for. You. you are something else. You're pretty. I think that was the ticket. We've been changing the bait size. We had a little bit bigger bait at first, yep. so we changed up to a little smaller, and this time we're kind of mid-sized here, guys, on the baits. Yep. But that's what it's taken, and we have, we have really difficult conditions. You know, so that's, we're gonna get back on them, see if we get another one. There we go. Drop. Seven to one. Drop four. <laughs> <laughs> See if we bust some more out here, guys. We will. You will. Absolutely. I don't know if I ever remember deep dropping where I had to run both motors at the same time to keep us in the deal. Which is insane. It would be nice if we just, just stop. Yep. Oh, it's like 4.29. Now it's 4.3, 4.1. 
craziness. It's, it's crazy. It already. Yep, we're on bottom. We got bite going on right now. Awesome. Give him a couple. Give him a minute. See if he's got some buddies. Oh yeah, they're, they're nibbling. nibbling. Again. <laughs> they are nibbling. They can't resist the squid. Gourmet, gourmet dish. We'll give them a second. Actually, I'm going to hit them. Full oh, turn. So as I crank the rod up here, guys, I'm really used to my equipment. I could tell I probably had one or maybe two on there. So I drop it back down. In addition, when I'm dropping it down, I got to spin the boat around here. The current right here is at... 4.3 knots. Absolutely insane. Most guys I know will not deep drop over three knots. So if you guys are new at deep dropping and you're heading out, and you run into a current over three knots, I would encourage you to go east or west, find a different spot. Yeah, we got, oh, we got something going there. Oh. We got somebody, we got a couple somebody's. Woo! Get those two in, and then you know what? We're gonna get the lost the middle guy. I got this one. I got this. Get him in the boat. Well, you took it good. Perfect. There we go. All right. Nice. Yeah, baby. Yep. Dan's. Ah. Dan's. We we brain and bleed every fish on this boat. It's. The meat just turns out a lot better. If you ever need a lobotomy, Dan is the expert. Dan at is in charge He's of the lobotomy. Scrambling brains. Perfect. Uh, uh, one. One. The other one's definitely got it. Triple rosies, look at that. It's gonna be a rosy kind of That's a big one right here. That's, that's, that's a fatwa. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fatwa. That's a fatwa. Well we we can't we got probably do one more drop in there guys. I think we gotta do one more drop. We're here. Elizabeth would be proud if we didn't. Elizabeth didn't know is going to be very proud and very happy. Elizabeth told Dan, "Don't you come home without a Rosie." So a Rosie. we're trying to make <laughs> make Dan's marital life last a lot longer here. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, we've got a bunch of Rosies in the boat. We're going to do one more drop here. So I actually move over like a mile or mile and a half or so. We're dropping in a new location, you guys. So I encourage doing this every time I'm deep dropping. I would encourage you to do it as well. Look on your look on your chart. Pick another spot. And try one new spot each time. Whole cool thing with the waves and the bounce, and you're better off with a little less drag. Get the gaff, Heiko, just in case the, the barrel. We might have to hook him. One twenty. Yep, ninety six. 86. Yep, 80. 80. There's a wind on. I'm going to get the boat turned. I'm turning it. I'm getting it there. I'm getting it there. There's color. There's color. A big rosy. Oh, it's a bunch of rosy. Oh, man. Three big rosy. Holy crap. Grab them dogs. Oh, oh. Huge! Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him! Watch the weight! Oh my god, look at that! Holy crap! Those are studs! Wow! Alright, that is the Rosie's jackpot. Alright. I think we're solid on Rosie's. I think we're good to go. I think we're good to go. That's a good way to end the day. Always end the day on a high note. And that's that, the high note, right there. That's, that's awesome. A, that's the high, high note. That one, brother. Woo! We are yeah, That's ready. awesome. Yep, yeah, that was great. Rosies, man. Look at the size of them. That's a Compared to like my foot. <laughs> he almost. He almost. I'm a size was, ten. What size are you, Heiko? He's Twelve. The size oh, of a grouper, yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah, he is like. It's almost a twenty-inch red. Wow. Ah, right. That's amazing. That's a wrap. What do you mean? That is a wrap. <laughs> So with that, I've had a bunch of you ask, how do you catch rose fish? So the rig itself has 200 pound test. I've got three hooks on it. I run a, I run a 9-0 hook. Actually on the rosies, they have really big mouths. So I run a 9-0 circle mustad demon hook. Do I need a hook this heavy for a rose fish? No. 
but when you hook that barrel fish or that queen snapper or that giant grouper, you're gonna be glad you got that on there. The reason I use 200 pound test all the way through on the rig is because you can see little kinks in the liner. These are the rigs I'm using. This one's, the hooks are get, starting to get a little rusty. It's about time to replace them. If you use 150 or 100 pound, this is gonna get all snarled up and twisted coming up at those depths. And your rig's gonna be shot within about two drops typically. So I've got three hooks on the rig. It's pretty simple. On the bottom of the rig, there's another swivel. And I, on that, I tie a piece of 40 pound breakaway with another snap swivel that snaps onto the weight. And I've changed that. If it's really wavy, I change that swivel. I'd say every third or that breakaway, every third or fourth drop, because as that weight's bouncing, it's stretching that mono, and the mono is gonna thin out. Your 40 pound mono after about four drops is gonna be 20 pound, and a good wave will snap that and break that off. So that's my rig in a nutshell. Here's a captain's tip. Multiple rigs on the boat. I vac pack them. You gotta be careful how you set the hooks when you do the vac pack on them. You can see they're not piercing through. The reason for back, back packing them is they don't get air in them, then they do not rust. A lot of times you can take a piece of paper towel or a piece of like cardboard, put over the tip of that hook so it doesn't puncture through. I'm gonna bring you on board the Falcon here and we're gonna take a look at a map and I'm gonna show you what I look for when I am hunting the black belly rosefish. Okay guys, we're on the Falcon. Here we go. I'm gonna show you what I'm looking for. So I'm south of, like here, I think I'm just showing you for an example and if you guys live down in Cudjoe or Big Pine or Sugarloaf here, and I'm showing your spot, I'm sorry, but here we go. I don't, I don't usually fish this far west, but if I was coming down here, here's what I'm looking for. First of all, you got this point coming out here. Okay, so on the point, I would expect the rosies to be stacked up on the west side of the point. Your current flows this way. I'm anticipating them to be there initially. So I'd drop that point. That'd be, one, that'd be my starting spot in this particular location. Here's another good point. Drop this one here. I prefer to be... I've caught them anywhere from 650 to 1500 feet of water. So anywhere where you got sharp structure, come across here. You know, another little point here. But I would start with these points. And you, if your current's coming this direction, you're going to want to drop here, drift from here to here. Do the next one. Drift from here to here. Until you find them, guys. Now, once you get going and you get into the rosefish and you find a spot market, they're typically there every, every time you go back or they're pretty close to it. So if you drop and you hit the bottom in two to three minutes on a known location and you're not hooking one, something happened. One thing I've noticed with them when it's, they bite a lot better when it's sunny is what it seems to be. I'm not 100% on that, but every time I'm out there and it's cloudy, they're not biting good, then the sun comes out later they start biting like crazy. And I've done that a number of times. I've kind of noticed that pattern. So if you're out there on a real cloudy day, I probably wouldn't be rose fishing, but that's what I look for. Looking for the, like the little edges, look for the little points. So you're coming down here. I got a couple of spots down there with ledges and stuff, but anything like this, and you, you can catch anything on these. Like I said, I'll go down to um, 13, 1400 feet of water looking for them if there's a point like here or here. Big thing too, you see in today's video, I'm running four knots current, 4.3 knots. If you haven't deep dropped a lot, I do not recommend doing that. And with the rose fish, one thing I do a little different than the regular, regular like grouper and stuff. If I know I'm in a spot where they're at, I'll drop the rig on the bottom and I'll lay it down. I lay it down, give it 30, 40 seconds. You'll see me snug the rod up. If the rod tip is bouncing, I hit go on the reel to pick the rig up and that'll take the circle hook and flip it around and hook the fish. That's why I lift it up. They won't get hooked typically just grabbing it, but if you pick it up, and I can tell by the weight on my rod tip, I've done this so much, I can tell by how my rod tip is bending if I got one, two, or three of those rosies on at that particular time. And if I think I have one or two, I'll drop the rig right back down, lay it down, and hit them again. Hopefully this helps. If you guys have any comments or questions, please shoot them out. A couple clips here on a previous video.
at the end, I'll load the previous video link on screen. You guys can click it and watch it for a clean and cook episode with the Rosies as well. But I'll load that up on the end. Here's just a couple quick clips out of it that you can see me cleaning the fish and grilling it. One of my favorite ways to prepare the black belly rosy. As always, if you guys have not had a chance yet, please hit that subscribe button. And if you've got any comments or questions, or if you felt this video was useful, give me a thumbs up, give me a like on the content. Again, Captain Matt here with Marathon Sport Fishing. Thanks for tuning in today. Signing off.